let's see how fast this Kia EV9 can charge on a rapid charger. Apparently, it should be 24 minutes to get to 80%, 10 to 80% in 24 minutes. That's what Kia says. So let's test that. This time, and what makes this a little bit special, I suppose, is that this has battery preconditioning, which means ordinarily in this kind of weather, because it's pretty cold and rubbish, uh, a battery wouldn't charge that fast in most EVs. But if you have battery preconditioning, it should heat the battery just enough to get decent charge speed. That's the theory, but let's test it. So we have 19% at the moment. Interestingly, it comes up with a low battery charge symbol down there. I mean, I wouldn't say that's that low. It's still 53 miles of range, but anyway, 19%. So the nearest ultra rapid charger, so like 350 kilowatts, is Ionity at Folkestone Services. So we're gonna go there. We're gonna try and get there with 10%, which I think I can manage, hopefully. Um, this isn't the most efficient car. And when I start battery preconditioning, which I'm gonna do now, um, then that will obviously decrease the range a little bit more. But I'm gonna try and get there with 10%. Before I do that, let's find the OBD port, which should be down here. This is an OBD dongle. We're gonna plug that in, and we're gonna see what the battery temperature is now. And then we're gonna plan the route, and we're gonna see if it starts warming up the battery. Technical stuff, most people don't care about any of this, but uh, you know, I'm a geek. All right, so, just fumbling around here, lots of fuses there but I can't see an OBD port. Ah it's under here. It's under here. Okay it's under there sorry. Right so that makes it it's kind of like Ionic 5 actually then. Ooh, that's in. Okay now we're going to go to car scanner and we'll see what the battery temperature is like. I've connected car scanner pro so if I go to dashboard we got loads of information on here but um, the battery is between 9 and 10 degrees Celsius at the moment we've got two point well it keeps changing but we've got about two kilowatts that's being used just for doing the uh, the heating at the moment so now we're going to navigate to a um, charger and we'll see if that starts preheating it I on a T <laughs> Press OK or search to see other ways to perform a search. Ionity Hive, yes, OK. So, does it know that's a charger? Because obviously it needs to, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's not really... Oh, Go away. Ionity. Okay, zero out of four. Oh, four out of four are available. Okay, that's good. So it doesn't know this is, this is a charger, at least. Well, it seems to, anyway. So set as destination. 16 minutes, 11 miles. Okay. Start route. Battery conditioning activated for optimal DC charging. Okay, that's good. So we're at nine to 10 degrees of the battery. So let's see if that gets better. It's 11 miles to get there, 19% battery, so yes, I'll try to get there for 10%. I'll see how it goes, I might have to drive like a stall it a little bit. It's more efficient than I thought it was going to be, and well, part of it is going to be going downhill, and this is a two and a half ton car, so that will recharge the battery a bit going downhill. Anyway, let's see how we go. This is a massive car, as I keep saying, but luckily the, uh, the visibility is really good. It has lots of safety things as well, so it will, um, beep and buzz if uh, anyone is approaching from behind uh, your sort of in your blind spots when i first started um, driving this car i felt like it was massive far too big for me really far too big for our family but um i've kind of got used to it a little bit now and um, it doesn't feel quite as terrifying i'm annoyed myself because i forgot to turn off the uh the speed limit noises Bing, bing, bing. All you have to do is go one mile an hour above the speed limit. And it will bing and bong and drive you absolutely bloody nuts. It drives me crazy. 
And yes, I know it's an EU rule or something, but um, it's it's Hyundai and Kia. It's the way they've interpreted the EU rule. Um, not all manufacturers are going to make it this bad. Bing. Yes, thank you. You get a bing if the speed limit changes, and then you get the boom, boom, boom if you're one mile an hour above the speed limit. It's, it's really idiotic. It drives me crazy. So I'm pretty much here, but um, I'm going to. I've got 14% battery. It'll be about 13 by the time I get there. So I'm just going to go down the motorway a little bit and then back just to try and get the battery down to about 10% a bit more. Currently, by the way, the efficiency is 1.8 miles per kilowatt hour. That is pretty poor, but then it is preheating the battery, so it's using a lot of energy for that. But uh, not enough energy for me, it seems, because I need to get it lower. I want to get it to 10%. Forward it, full face not visible, warning system limited. Oh, okay, bloody hell. So I've just got a 12% battery, and it says battery uh, preconditioning turned off, disabled, or whatever it said. So that's interesting. So at 12%, then it will stop doing battery preconditioning. Leave at the third exit. Okay, so now we're going to plug in. Got it with 11%, annoyingly. Um, so it's a bit more efficient than uh, I wanted it to be, really. Start. Insert plug. Ah, why? Why is it cancelled? It's strange, isn't it? Start. Okay, it's making noises. Weird. Now the car is on. I will I'll try turning the car off. I think that'll help. Let's turn it off. Looks like I'll have to try another one then. Okay. Let's try again then. You can do it. So, all right, I'll try the Electroverse app then. Okay, it's really annoying I didn't get to 10%. Okay, so it's charging. It was like third time lucky in the end. I still don't know why it just started working, but I used the Octopus Electroverse app because the RFID scanner didn't work on here. Terrible, isn't it? Really rubbish, anyway. Um, and I, was, I just held the charging plug into the socket. It, I've heard a few times people have said, if you have a problem, then hold the plug in the car. Like, like just push it in a little bit more. And it does something called handshaking, where the charger talks to the car. Sometimes in the handshaking bit, if the plug's a little bit loose, then it might not work. Um, it is ridiculous, but anyway. It, it, maybe that was the thing that worked, or maybe it's just some other glitch with Ionity, I don't know. Um, generally, I don't have problems with Ionity these days, but just today, just today while I've got a fancy car and I'm trying to film something, then it decides not to work. Anyway, it's been staying at pretty consistent 133-ish kilowatts pretty much the whole time I've been here. I would have expected that to go up to more like 200 or whatever the maximum is by now especially as I preheated the battery, but um, it, clearly not. Clearly it wasn't preheating long enough. You can see that this is saying 30 minutes to 80%. So not as fast as it should be. 
even with the battery preheating. I really wish more car brands were as good as Hyundai and Kia at just showing the basic information. You get everything you need to know. You get the charge speed actually on the dash. It tells you how long it's going to take both to get to 100% and 80%. It's all very clear. I, I wish all EVs had that. Weird that so many don't. Like the Megan, for instance. The Megan didn't. And the Megan is really good in every way, really. I mean, it's a brilliant car, but it didn't tell me the charge speed. It drives me a bit crazy. But let's have a look at the battery temperature, because that, I would have thought, would have gone up a little bit by now, really. Got to be said, that's still a, a very, very fast. That's almost the capacity of my Leaf's battery charged up in 10 minutes. So, and that's, pretty, that's a pretty flat, consistent rate at 133-ish, 134 the whole time. So that's not bad, really. So the battery temperature then is between 24 and 28 degrees which should be its kind of happy place, I would have thought. Well, 28 is probably more its happy place, but that should kind of unlock pretty fast charging, really. So um, I wonder, I'm, I don't have enough time to do another test. I need to live with this car for weeks and weeks, but um, it would be interesting to do the test without doing the battery preconditioning and see just how fast or just how slow it is then. Oh, there we go. So it's just gone up to 165 then. Well, that was weird. Went to 165 and then back down to 135. A bit strange. Of course, what I don't know is whether it's the charger that's limiting the power or the car. Um, could be the charger because it is full today. We've got four cars all charging at the same time. And in theory, that in theory that shouldn't make a difference, should it? Because these are 350 kilowatt chargers. They shouldn't be 350 kilowatts only if no one's using them. So, um, I really, yeah, I just don't know, um, I can't say, so, there's um, this Skoda here, um, the Skoda here is at 77% battery and that's charging at 56, I'm not going to start snooping around at everyone else's. And this is the point where I do my normal thing about Octopus Electroverse, which um, I always recommend people, in fact, someone was snooping around the charger. I say snooping, they were just looking at the chargers because there's someone waiting. We've only got four of these chargers here. And um, yeah, they were asking uh, how they start the charge because they've never used Ionity before. And you know, do they download the Ionity app? And I said, no, you want to get this. And when they do start charging, it means we both get five pounds off, which is nice. And you can do the same if you use the link at the bottom of the screen. Um, I hate to be an Octopus Electroverse um, shill, but... Uh, uh, it is better, really, for charging at Ionity. It's cheaper at charging at Ionity, MFG, Osprey, loads of others. So I would really recommend you get it. Um, ordinarily, it works first time, but of course today I was having issues, but I think that's Ionity's fault and not the fault of Electroverse. Okay, so it's been 19 minutes. We're still at that kind of speed. It's worth saying that these chargers are capable of doing plug and charge, which means you can plug in and you don't have to faff around with an app or anything. Not all cars support that. I think Mercedes is one that do, Volkswagen I think do, and I think the Kia EV9 is one that does as well. Uh, this Skoda here, maybe that does it as well, because they seem to be pretty quick, they just seem to plug in and then go. So plug and charge is really good if you've got a car that supports it. Okay, so I've been here 24 minutes. Um, now, Kia say that it gets to 80% in 24 minutes, but clearly it's not optimum battery temperature, so uh, that's why that hasn't happened. Or it's Ionity's fault, I really don't know, but I think it's probably just the car. So, um, yeah, so by now I should be at 80, but I'm not. I'm at 64% instead. Um, obviously, I'm just waiting around, but anyone normal, a normal person, wouldn't be waiting around, would they? They would go off and do something else. So, I'm just waiting around just for the fun of filming it for you. Look at the speed, it suddenly decided to go up. The weird little late burst, but okay. I mean, pretty amazing, really, to get that kind of speed at such a high state of charge. Perhaps it's complete coincidence, but both a Skoda and a BMW just left at around the same time that the charge increased. Might be a complete coincidence, I'm not sure. I don't remember what the charge curve should look like on this car. So anyway, just letting you know. And we're at 80%, so I'm gonna stop now. So that took 32 minutes, so more than 24. Stop. Oh, there we go. 
fancy. We're all done. 80%. Time to go. There we go then, 80%. So that's saying we've got 238 miles. So we'll see what kind of efficiency I get driving back home now nor in a normal way and not like I stole it. Off we go in this enormous vehicle, which... God, I hate this. I hate this bit of road. It's not the kind of road you want to navigate in an enormous bloody car like this. I feel like I'm going to scratch the... I'm going to scratch the alloys. Okay, so I'm not going to say I'm disappointed by that. I still think that's a pretty good time, you know, to get to 80%. If we were driving somewhere and we stopped up and we went to the services, that would easily be enough time to go in and um, pee, get a bite to eat or a coffee or something like that, and then come back out. You know, I'm, uh, I'm not going to complain about that. The issues I was having at Ionity, it seemed to be just related to me. I mean, the RFID scanner thing, that must be a hardware issue, but that kind of weird thing where it wouldn't start charging, it was just happening to me because someone pulled in with an Audi and they started charging fine, also with Electroverse, because I recommended it to them, so they were using the app. So that worked fine. Um, and yeah, the Skoda was charging fine, there was a BMW charging in another thing. One so I think it's just me anyway, or just this car wasn't working properly at that point. Um, it was turned on, but even when I turned it off, it still didn't work properly until I held the plug in. So I don't know what was going on there, but that's just an interesting thing. I'm not going to have another chance to rapid charge this, unfortunately. So back home, um, 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Bet that's better efficiency than you were expecting. It's better than I was expecting. Um, I didn't have that. I didn't have the heating or the air conditioning going though, so that helps a little bit. Although this has a heat pump, so. Um, but yeah, and also I wasn't going full speed because I was stuck behind someone who was going a little bit slower. But other than that, that's not too bad really. Um, especially as some of it was uphill. So for a big car like this, it's not awful. Um, my Ionic Five probably would have got 3.4. My E Nero would get about. 4.1 I reckon so that's way more efficient but this is a massive car what do you expect oh and the charge cost <laughs> the charge cost 47 pounds 88 pence bloody hell that's a lot isn't it but yeah I'm, obviously I can charge at home most of the time so but really that is a lot but it's a big car big battery so it's what it is